all you hear about this quarterback class is, oh, it's so mid. Uh, there are no franchise changers. It's, it's so much worse than last year's class. And to be honest, I agree. I would not feel particularly great spending a top 10 pick on any of these guys if you were to rank the top 32 players in this class regardless of position. I don't know how many quarterbacks would be on that. All right. But there's going to be a bunch that, that go in the first round. Okay. There's probably going to be four or five. Now, there is a guy in this class that I like more than everyone else. Someone has got to be the best player from this class from the quarterback group. And I have a guy that I would bet on to be that dude, and that is Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. And no, Spawn Hour isn't just off screen with a gun to my head um, telling me to say this. Help me. Um, I, I truly do believe this, and I will explain why. I'm gonna start my justification for this take with some clips from the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl presented by Chick-fil-A. And before I talk about Ritter on this play, I'm going to talk about the play itself. Uh, you've got Mesh with these two, then a dig in behind them, and then like a skinny post in behind that. And you may recognize this play from the Lamar Jackson video because I gave Greg Roman shit for this because I thought there was it was way too mucked up in the middle of the field. And maybe I owe him an apology because it works right here. But with him and the way that his routes were, like this guy was running Mesh, this guy was running Mesh, I think this was the skinny post and then this was the dig. So it was just more cluttered in the middle of the field. And instead of this guy being out here, he was like over here and it was all in the middle. So he hasn't beat the fraud alleg allegations just yet. I just think it's, it's funny that we're seeing this again right off the bat in the Ritter video. Anyway, what is the defense doing? This guy's going to drop back. This guy's going to spin to the middle of the field a little bit. This, this corner is going to drop back. Looks to me like cover three which means the seams are going to be open. You've got the skinny post going into that seam, and Ritter knows that, and he diagnoses it right away and throws it quickly right at the top of his drop. But when he drops back to throw this, I mean, this is not a throwing lane that's open. There's this Georgia defender in the way, but he understands what's going to happen. He's going to move out of the way to follow that drag, and the throwing lane's going to open up. There it right does, right there and he's able to hit this wide receiver right in behind it. And that's quick processing. That's good anticipation. When he loads up to throw, you still see the dust kicked up from the break. And this is just good quick game stuff here. And a lot of college quarterbacks don't recognize this is open because of that guy in the way, but Ritter does. And this is the kind of stuff you, you build a good career on in the NFL. Here's another solid example of anticipation from this game. These are basically, for all intents and purposes, clear outs with an out route in behind it. Because this is man coverage, and you can see the eyes of the corners on the wide receivers, they're probably not breaking off of this to make a play on it. You see the leverage here, inside leverage, out breaking route. So this is going to be open. Ritter is looking at it. There he begins the throwing motion just as that break is happening. He lays this ball out yards ahead of where this break is happening, really in harm's way of the corner if that corner was looking at Ritter, which he's not, so it's okay. He's able to throw that quickly. And, I mean, it's the difference of a couple yards here, right? You know, you, you throw that just as the break is beginning versus a second later when he's clearly open. Maybe that yak at the very end of this play doesn't happen, and it's an extra five yards or so. So that's why it's important. I was watching ESPN the other day, and Dan Orlovsky was talking about anticipation on some Stafford throws to Cup. And he was talking about how, like, oh, there are only about three quarterbacks in the league who can make throws like that. And Ritter's basically doing stuff like that already. So I think Orlovsky was exaggerating a little bit there. But the anticipation from Ritter is very nice and, and good to see. This play is sort of similar to the first one. You've got, like, Mesh, and then you've got a dig in behind it. Um, but the difference here is there's an isolated receiver at the top of the screen running like a nine route. And once this play starts, you're going to see this safety take some steps towards the middle of the field. This safety take a few steps down, which means you've got one-on-one -on -one at the top of the screen. R Ritter recognizes that, resets, swivels outside, and takes it. And this is a completion for a big gain. And I could see maybe having some problems with the placement here. It's a little bit high, 
but I get keeping it out of the reach on the top shelf of this of this cornerback here, and it's a little bit too far inside, but I also get that this is a really fast Georgia defense, and you don't want that ball to hang in the air too long. So overall, I, I consider this play a, a pretty big net positive, making a second read and getting the ball, throwing a catchable ball here. It gets a little bit dicey at the catch point if this were to get dropped, but it wasn't, so I'm, I'm grading this out as, as pretty good from Ritter. And I know plays like that aren't going to move absolutely everybody. I mean, who have the busts been over the recent years? Rosen comes to mind, Dwayne Haskins, uh, Jared Goff a little bit, Baker Mayfield's not the most athletic guy. It's the guys who are billed as like these pro-style pocket passers who never really have reached the heights that you'd expect from like a first round pick. So touting that as like why someone is good and has not had a high hit rate recently, but you do eventually need to know those things. You do eventually need to throw with anticipation. You do eventually need to know what you're looking at and make good reads. All the best quarterbacks do it. Now, it's better if you can do that and be a freak athlete. Um, and I would not bet on someone who is just smart and and not athletic in, in today's era. But the thing about Ritter is he is decently athletic and he can create out of structure like some of these, you know, high level guys in the NFL can. Here's an example of it from the Georgia game. Going back to the Georgia game, Georgia is basically using the same strategy that the Bengals used against Mahomes, rushing three, dropping eight into coverage when there's nothing there, force him to make a mistake. And there is nothing there, all right? This hitch is getting sat on. Nickel is taking the corner route. Uh, Safety is taking the post route. Checks the front side of the play. Really not much there. All right, checks the back side of the play. There he looks. There's a Texas route, but it's not the, the cleanest cut I've ever seen, and it's taken away as well. There's nothing there. There's two defensive linemen with unimpeded paths, two Ritter at this point. The line can't hold up. And you see him run backwards, reset the blockers, all right, so they're out in front of him, turn around, buy himself some time, run towards the sideline, run towards the end zone, I mean, a guy breaks open, make the throw, pick up the first down. Good stuff creating uh, when things break down there. And I love watching his footwork, not to sound too much like Quentin Tarantino, but I like watching his feet when things break down and when he's moving around the pocket. Uh, they always seem to be Active, never flat-footed, light on his toes, a little bit um, like a dancer, I feel like. I think his footwork is good on the move and smooth on the move. And I think nowhere is that more apparent than like the very next play. There's something deeply satisfying about this play to me. It's almost elegant the way Ritter moves here all right, and resets his feet and decelerates and scores a touchdown. Let's break this down in more of a piece-by-piece -piece type of way. Three-step drop, doesn't like what he sees, so he's going to reset his feet, backpedal. He's always got his base pointed towards where he wants to throw. Now, this is the most impressive part to me. You see how light he is on his toes. You see him like Michael Jackson leaning forward here. You know, picture like someone with bad pocket presence, Baker Mayfield, for example. I can so clear, clearly see him on a play like this, giving up and either trying to make it to the edge and getting caught by any of these three defenders, or even worse, and I can maybe even more clearly see him turning his back, spinning around and like moving even farther backwards. You know, turning around is bad anytime you take your eyes off the defense. It's hard to get like recalibrated. But Ritter, Ritter is better than that. And you could pause this at like any point and he's always looking like forward, and he's in a good position to like settle down and throw at every point, and it's just elegant to me. And that kind of pocket presence is, and calmness and poise, and you see like at the end here, the deceleration, and still has solid mechanics, right? Getting that front foot around, pointed towards his target, getting that hip all the way through, and throwing this touchdown. Like There are NFL quarterbacks starting right now who don't have this kind of calmness and poise under fire. All right, but he does. And that's what that's what really excites me about him. This is the last clip I'll show from the Georgia game. At one point, they substituted their left tackle. I think he got hurt or ejected or something with a guy who should be spending his college days partying, studying, drinking with friends, getting a part-time job maybe at the rec center, 
he should not be trying to block Aziz Ojolari, sadly. And you get plays like this where he gets pushed right into the lap of Ritter as soon as he hits his, the top of his drop, and Ritter has to make a play happen. And again, smooth, rolling out to his left as right-handed quarterback and putting the ball on the money. And I think this one's especially impressive because, I mean, I pause this at this moment, and his eyes are looking downfield, and his feet are completely turned around, and he's, he's rolling out. But again, that's, that's the kind of panic he doesn't ha- or that's the kind of calmness he has is even when like the threat is imminent and he has to bail, he's still looking down the field. And I said before, you don't want to turn your back to the defense. He really limits the amount of time that that happens here. Gets his hips around quickly, gets his eyes around quickly and instantly is able to reset and make a good throw. Even though it's incomplete, sometimes good defense just wins out. Um, but I think this is on the money, on a rope, about 36 yards in the air good arm strength, good athletic ability, and good creation when things break down. But really, I think the number one reason why players end up being busts isn't how they read the field or their arm strength or how they move. It is more their mentality than anything else and their competitive toughness because it is a big jump to go from, although with NIL deals, it might be a little different now, but to go from being unpaid to getting millions of dollars and having more downtime without classes. All right, that's a big thing to deal with all of a sudden. That's a big lifestyle change and having a new playbook that might be more complicated and playing better teams every single week it is, a, it is a grind that some guys just aren't ready for. And once they get that bag, um, sometimes I think football just maybe doesn't seem as important. And they lose a little bit of that edge. I think that could be the case with some guys. As a quarterback especially, you can't have any kind of immaturity. Um, you got to be a really good leader. And, and Ritter, although I don't know, has that, I, I feel. There's that quote when he, they were going in to play Notre Dame and he was like, or the interviewer was like, it's really loud there or something like that. And then he was like, well, it's not going to be loud for very long. And then for him to go into Notre Dame and beat them in one of the biggest games of his career, I like to see that kind of stuff. And you look at him like mic'd up in practice and the things that he's saying, he seems like an ultra competitive guy and a guy who embraces what the quarterback position really means and, and all that entails as a team leader. All right. I, I have my I don't know. I don't know the guy. But from what I see from the outside, he does have the personality type that I would look for in a quarterback. He's a little bit insane, but all the great quarterbacks are a little bit crazy. And I like that about Ritter, although I cannot be sure. I know this video is getting a little bit long, but I do want to highlight some throws from the Notre Dame game, especially this one, which I showed a little bit earlier when I was talking about his anticipation. But here, he's going to start by checking the top of the screen, the right side of the field, and you're going to see the cover three dropping back, dropping towards the middle of the field, dropping back, and the hook defender is the safety coming down from depth. So he doesn't want what he sees at the top of the screen there, and that's a good idea as there's not really much up there. He moves to his second read right away, and it's a slant, but Kyle Hamilton is there with inside leverage, and if you watched my last video, you'd know why that's a horrible idea to throw. And so then he moves on to his next read, which is this guy, and you can see him right here winding up to throw this pass before this wide receiver has even gotten into his break. And he's read the entire field by the time that this wide receiver is ready to cut inside. And then he throws the ball. As soon as the wide receiver cuts, the ball is right f there for him. You see his tackle here getting beat immediately. All right, there's not much more an edge defender can do. And Desmond Ritter has already read the entire field and gotten that ball out accurately to pick up a really nice gain. That's really, really high-level quarterbacking. And you can see it from this angle, too. If you think I'm kidding with, with how he's reading the field, watch his, watch his eyes, watch his head. Right? First read, second read, third read. Bang. Big gain. And that's why he's QB1. And this is the play that sealed it for Cincinnati. You got all the wide receivers running a curl, except for this guy. And he's got some separation right there. But it's still difficult because this guy is in a good position to make a play over the top if there's any kind of arc on this ball. You can't lead him. And you can't really throw it directly to him either because this guy is in the way and can get his hands up and bat it down. So the only throw that really makes sense here is an absolute bullet, something that doesn't hang in the air, so this guy can't make a play on it, that whizzes right over the shoulder of this defensive back, and that's exactly what Ritter throws. That's exactly what Ritter throws, and they win the game. And I think looking at this from the broadcast angle is even a little bit more impressive because they highlight, yeah, it wasn't his first read, and you kind of see what Ritter is seeing here. And this guy's not really open. All right, he that window doesn't really exist 
until the ball gets there, he throws him open and lets him pick a couple pick lets him pick up a couple more yards after the catch. And yeah, this game beat Notre Dame and essentially is what allowed Cincinnati to make the playoffs. And to be honest, you put any of the other quarterbacks in this class on that Cincinnati team, I don't think they're making the playoffs. I think they're losing a game or two along the way. And they're not going undefeated last year either. And that is why I I like Ritter. That's why I like Ritter. Throws like this in the clutch. I was struggling a little bit to find a good comp for Desmond Ritter. The one I see most of the time is Daniel Jones. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't see it a little bit. He does. Ha- the, this is where the weaknesses come into play for Desmond Ritter. And I didn't really highlight those because this is a video to convince you that he's the best one, you know. But he does have an internal clock that runs a little bit too long. He can hang in the pocket a little bit too long and, and take sacks maybe he shouldn't take or fumble balls he maybe shouldn't fumble. And his placement is is not great, okay? It, it can be great, um, but consistently there are some misses high, especially too high. Uh, some throws that should be easy he can make a little bit too difficult. And, and Jones can struggle sometimes with, with similar things. And he was a guy who was drafted in the first round, um, really high actually, but was kind of viewed as more of a mid-round type of prospect. And I, I can see why people think Ritter is is a similar caliber guy coming out. The comp I ended up landing on was Trevor Lawrence. And he's coming off a bad rookie season, so maybe this doesn't move you any more than Daniel Jones did. But he had a bad rookie season with Urban Meyer coaching him and Laquan Treadwell as his best wide receiver for a good portion of the season. It was rough shit and impossible to have a good season in those circumstances, in my opinion. I liked the traits that Trevor Lawrence showed. I thought he had really good pocket presence the whole year. I think that he showed high-level arm strength and hit a lot of really, really, really difficult throws, and he was doing that kind of the whole year. Not the problem. Trevor Lawrence, not the problem, but this isn't about Trevor Lawrence. It's about Desmond Ritter and the similarities. Tall dude with a frame that's a little bit more thin than you would like to see. I think they have similar running ability. Um, I didn't really show Desmond Ritter running in this video. Go check the highlights. He can do it at a pretty high level, and Lawrence could do it at a pretty high level. Uh, I think it's underrated trait in both of them. Uh, Again, winners, thin frame, good athlete with their legs, underrated, even though it's not something that that you think of when it's part of their game. Uh, Nice job reading the field most of the time. Lawrence isn't exactly the most pinpoint accurate passer all the time, um, and neither is Ritter, although they can make every throw. So that is kind of why I go with Ritter as being group of five Lawrence as like he might be one of the better group of five quarterbacks in history, one of the more winning group of five quarterbacks in history, one of the best group of five quarterback prospects in history. Um, I don't know when the next time a group of five team will be making the playoffs, probably not for a long time. So as far as group of five is concerned, Ritter is kind of there, Trevor Lawrence. And that's kind of where I see some similarities. Now, I don't think Ritter is worth the number one overall pick. I don't really think he's worth a top 10 overall pick. I don't think any of the quarterbacks are. The placement issues are bad enough where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I love it for, for like really turning a franchise around. But, you know, after the top 10, go ahead and take Ritter if you need a quarterback. I think he's as good a bet as any, like I said. And uh, yeah, QB1 in a weaker class, but I still like the prospect. Last year, I might even have him. This would be a really hot take. But last year, I was really low on, on Zach Wilson. I kind of like the stuff that Ritter does more than the stuff Zach Wilson uh, did in college. So maybe I had Zach Wilson as like a second, third round prospect last year. Ritter, I think, might be even a small cut above those guys, but definitely a cut below Lance, Fields, and and Lawrence from last year's class, if we're thinking about it in that way. But I get that the Zach Wilson take is a, is a hot one that most people wouldn't agree with, but that's just how I felt about it. Anyway... That's kind of gives you an idea of how I feel about Desmond Ritter. I hope you're kind of seeing what I'm seeing now. I'm going to talk. I'll be back next week with another film breakdown. Hopefully not on a quarterback because I've talked about two quarterbacks in three weeks. I want to talk about all the different positions and all the different teams. So I'll be back next week with a position that isn't quarterback. Leave suggestions in the comment f- comments for videos you want to see. Um, I always am looking for ideas. So thank you so much for watching this. And I will see you next week with another film breakdown. Goodbye. Goodbye.